Okay, today we're going to be looking at total internal reflection. So let's consider a prism and we're going to consider a semicircular prism. And this is the halfway mark and it will also mark our normal line. So we've got a, um, some light coming in here. Now it's going to come in at perpendicular to this surface. So it's just going to go straight through our prism here. And then it hits the, out the other surface of the prism at some angle theta to the normal. So this is the normal to this um, surface of our prism. Now we're going to see that this is refracted like this and we're going to have, so this is theta 1 and this will be theta 2. But if you were to do this, get a prism like this and shine a, a laser light in, you'll also find that you have um, a fainter line coming back out. And this is going to be less bright. So you're going to, you'd be able to see the reflection coming off this, um, this surface, just like a mirror. So that you've got, you'll have um, part of the light refracted and part of the light reflected. Now what happens is, let's redraw our prism because I don't want to have, oops that's not a straight line is it? Um, we don't want to have lots of lines that's going to make things confusing. Let's say we'll draw our normal again to the surface. Let's say we move our laser light to give a greater angle of incidence. So we're moving it along this direction. And as you move it along, you will see this reflected beam will grow in intensity and this refracted beam will get less in intensity until you get to some angle, theta, and we'll sort of call it theta c, where the light is along this surface and <clears throat> at this moment we have what is known this here is the it is at right angles to the normal and we call this angle the critical angle so the critical angle is our angle of incidence here And our angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So this shows us, at this, so at this point we have this, this happening. Now if we were to increase, we'll draw the prism again. So we get an angle of incidence now greater. So we we'll call this just theta 3. Theta 1 and there's theta c and theta 3. So theta 3 in this case is greater than theta c. What then happens is we have our beam of light totally reflected. So this surface is acting like a mirror. So this angle here is the same as angle 3. So we've got total, this is called total internal reflection. <clears throat> now total internal reflection only happens inside mediums where the where the speed of light is less than on the outside of that medium so any kind of prism, glass, water, anything like that you'll be able to see total internal reflection at work. Now total internal ref reflection is, oh let me just go back to here, um, <clears throat> so to be able to um, find out what this critical angle is for to, to hit the point where you were going to get the light totally in, um, reflected, we use this <coughs> the fact that at the critical angle, the ref angle of reflect refraction is 90 degrees, and we'll find that the sine of the critical angle is equal to 1 over n, where n is the... Um, refractive index. Let's do an example. 
a block of glass has a refractive index of approximately 1.5 what nice for what what is the critical angle so we know that <coughs> the sine of theta c is equal to 1 over n which is 1 over 1.5 and um, so take the inverse sign to get the critical angle as 41.8 degrees but for easiness we'll call it 42 degrees in our glass. Now total internal reflection has some very um, important applications in our modern world. world. We use it in fibre optics so a fibre optic cable is is glass, and we the glass end the, the the beam of light enters at an angle greater than the the um angle of the critical angle for the medium for the glass that is being used, and then it is reflected right along the cable. So fiber optics allow large amounts of data to be transmitted. They are cheaper than copper wire and more efficient. So before the technology of fiber optic cables, telephone communications were done <coughs> along copper wire. And copper is expensive and you can't get the you can't send the amount of data that you can send using light um, through copper wire. So this is a this is just a much better um, technology. It is what allows us to have the internet and broadband and international telecommunications. There's fiber optic cables under the oceans connecting continents now, and um, it's also used in medicine. If you were to go and um, have an endoscope in your mouth, um, let me try and draw your face. There's a nose. And oh, it's a terrible mouth. And so they put a fiber optic cable down with a little camera on the end into a person's stomach, and that allows the doctor to be able to look into the stomach and um, see if there's anything problems, or even further down into the intestine. They, they can do this, and it all involves fiber optic technology. Um, so it's yeah, it has revolutionized both medicine and telecommunications.